Hello and welcome back to the second pseudocode video as part of Topic 7 Algorithm Design and Problem Solving for IGCSE Computer Science. In the previous video we did look at different methods to design and construct a solution to a problem using pseudocode and now we're going to build on that and explain the purpose of a given algorithm and also to understand standard methods of solution. Okay, video 1 for pseudocode we covered this top half. We're now going to be looking at input and output in the first part of this video, totaling and counting, and then we're going to be looking at how we can understand and use standard flowchart symbols to represent the above statements, commands, and structures. Okay, so just to recap on pseudocode, this is a simple method of showing an algorithm by using English keywords that are very similar to those used in high-level programming languages. Data items to be processed by the algorithm are given meaningful names in the same way that variables and constants in a high level language are used. However, it's not bound by a strict syntax rule of a programming language. So here's an example of some pseudocode whereby we're going to set a variable called total to zero. We're then going to set a grade counter to one. And while the grade counter is less than or equal to 10, we're going to be able to input a new grade or the next grade. We're going to add the grade into the total and then we're going to set the class average so this is for um, a class of students we're going to set the class average to the total divided by 10 obviously there's 10 students in the class and then we're going to print the class average so this is basically some pseudocode that will allow us to calculate the average grade for 10 students in a class okay nice and simple basically just written almost in standard english as a list of items. So let's start with um, input and output um, using pseudocode. Input and output are basically used for the entry of data, inputting information into the, into, a, uh, into the program, and output is for getting information onto the screen or um, to print something onto paper. We can use um, read, the word read in pseudocode rather than the word input, and we can also use print rather than the word output um, in, in pseudocode as well. As part of the IGCSE, we need to be able to explain the purpose of an algorithm. So let's break this down. An algorithm sets out the steps to complete a given task. That's basically what an algorithm is, what a computer program is. A little bit like a recipe for baking a cake. It is usually shown as a list of instructions, as you've just seen, a flowchart or pseudocode. So that the purpose of the task and the processes needed to complete it are clear to those who will use it. The more you practice these skills, the more familiar will, you will become with writing, finding and correcting errors in algorithms. The purpose of the pseudocode here is to output an alarm sound or at a, t at a set time and see how exactly this works. The processes are waiting for 10 seconds and getting the current time checking the current time with the alarm time and outputting the alarm sound when both times match. So we're going to assign the value 7 a.m. to the alarm time. We're going to assign a mp3, a music file, to alarm sound. And then we've got a little repeat until um, piece of pseudocode where we repeat, we wait for 10 seconds and then we get the time until the time is the same time, i.e. 7 a.m., as the alarm time. Once that happens, we can then output the alarm sound. So that's what's happening in terms of that particular algorithm, that particular piece of pseudocode. Here we have something a little bit more complicated. Um, but basically, we've got pseudocode and a flowchart explaining the same thing. Have a look at this. What is the purpose of the algorithm um, that they both represent? What are the processes included in the algorithm? Okay, and what would be the output if the numbers 9 and 21 were inputted? Well, let's have a look. In the flowchart, we're going to start and we're going to input number 1, which would be 9. We're then going to input number 2, which would be 21. So the processes are input number 1, input number 2. So we've inputted number 9 and number 21. We're then going to see if number 1, number 9, is greater than or bigger than uh, 21. If it is, it would output number one is largest, but in this case, number two is the largest, so no, so it outputs number two is the largest, or it would have output 
21 is the largest and then the program would stop and it's exactly the same in this one input number one input number two if number one is greater than number two then print num one is largest else print num two is largest and then we end that if statement okay moving on to standard methods of solution we've got five different elements which need to be covered in the igcse it's very important in the design of algorithms to be able to repeat existing methods for the finding um, of solutions and answers because when an algorithm is turned into a program these may be repeated many many times thousands of times in some cases you need to be able to use the following standard methods totaling counting finding the maximum minimum and the average the mean values searching using a linear search and sorting using bubble sort okay so let's start with totaling nice and easy totaling totaling means keeping a running total from values which have been added for example keeping a running total of the marks awarded to each student in a class as we start the program we assign zero to the val as, as the value of total so number zero to the value of total then we're going to do a for loop so for counter we're going to assign one to the class size okay so we don't know how big the class size is but however we've whatever we've put in for the class size it's going to go from one to whatever the number is then total we're going to assign total plus the student grade the counter and then we're going to go to next counter so what does that what does that mean we set the total to zero and then we're totaling the marks in a variable called student grade okay that's how totaling is going to work there it's, it's going to keep adding and adding and adding the student grade to the number of students in the class and we then have counting keeping a count of the number of times an action takes place is another standard method for example counting the number of students that have been awarded a pass grade we, we start we initialize pass count the variable pass count to have a value of zero we're assigning zero to that for the counter we're going to again assign one to how many people are in the class we're going to input the student grade if the student grade is greater than 50 then pass count has been assigned the value of pass count plus one so we're adding the number of passes so every time a student scores more than 50 in the class then they're going to get then the pass count is going to be a one is going to be added we then move on to the next counter and then count equals count plus one okay so basically what we're doing there is counting the number of passes or changing this every time something has happened every time that if statement is um is is true then we add a pass so rather than so we're not totaling the number of marks this time we're basically counting how many students have passed or have got over 50. okay counting can also be used to count down if we were to do a program whereby we're simply counting down um, from 10 to 1 um, then we could use minus numbers instead of positives okay then in order to work out uh, an average and use maximum and minimum values I've got a little program here which demonstrates this so finding the largest and smallest values in a list are two standard methods that can frequently be found in algorithms for example finding the highest and lowest mark awarded to a group of students so this is great if we are reading in again if we've read if we've got a document a CSV file maybe a text file called class size we can have however many students in there so I'm going to set the maximum mark to zero I'm going to set the minimum mark to 100 okay and then I'm going to go for counter we set we assign like we've done in the past one to class size if the student grade is greater than the maximum mark then maximum mark has been assigned student grade okay and if if the student grade 
is less than the minimum mark, then minimum mark has been, then sorry, student grade has been assigned to the minimum mark. So we're looking through, we're going through all the marks until we've got a lowest mark and the highest mark based on what the students have got in their exam. Now, moving on to the fourth one, linear search. Linear search is the simplest way of searching through a list or an array of items used in an algorithm. Okay, so if you pretend, if for those of you who have done Python program before, we've got a program here which is calling on, which is using an external text file or an external um, spreadsheet of um, an, a, a list of items. So it moves down a list sequentially to locate the required element. It searches for an element by comparing it with each element in the list one by one. So what we're trying to do, please enter name to find. So all this is doing, if I've got a list of students yeah, in my search, so I've, cr I've got a document here um, called student names, and it says please enter name to, f to find. So if I enter a student name, uh, found is currently set to false. So setting a variable found as a flag using true and false to indicate if the name has been found or not. So we default it to, to false and we set the counter to one. And then we're going to repeat if the name equals student name, if, so it's, if it's in the list, yeah, then we can found, we can say found is true and we can add one to the counter. So every time we find a correct name in the list, then it will add one to the counter. So it will tell us how many names we've actually got in that list, how many names that we think we've got in that list. So every time we find, find the correct name, it sets the flag to true. Okay, and finally, we've got bubble sort. Um, now, bubble sort, I'm not going to do as Python code. Um, there are many, many different types of sorting in terms of using a list, if we've got a list of numbers particularly, a list of information, and we want to sort them into some kind of ascending or descending order. Um, for example, names could be sorted in alphabetical order, or temperatures could be sorted in ascending or descending order. As I've just said, there are several standard sorting methods available, but you only need to understand bubble sort for IGC. So what I'm going to do with this video, because we've not covered it at all so far, is use um, is show you what exactly bubble sort is. So in this example, we have a list of numbers which need to be sorted in ascending order. So from the lowest number up to the highest number. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to start from the first element in the array in the list and compare the first and the second elements, these two here. Um, because minus 3 is less than 18, well, there's no need to swap. We leave them where they are. So if the first element is greater than the second element, we're going to swap the elements. And then we're going to compare the second and the third elements and swap them if they need to be ordered. And proceed with the above process until the last element. So let's have a little look at that and break that down. Okay, so no swap. And then we've got the next two numbers, 18 and 0. Of course, they need to be swapped. So now we've got minus 3, 0, 18. We compare 18 and minus 7. Of course, they need to be swapped. And then we compare the last two, 5 and 18. And again, they need to be swapped. But we're still not in ascending order. We've got minus 3, 0 and minus 7, minus 7 being the lowest. So we do a second pass. We compare minus 3 and 0, no swap carry on 0 and minus 7 well there's a swap there and the rest remain the same and then finally on the third pass um, we swap around minus 3 and minus 7 and we have a little look and there we have got all the numbers in ascending order starting with minus 7 going up to 18 so that basically is bubble sort and later on, we will be learning how to do that in both pseudocode and how to write it as an actual program so we can sort through a potential list of information and put it into the correct order. 
okay but that is it for this video so I hope you found it useful please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee I'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed see you next time bye for now